Hey, greetings everybody from Terry D Lab. On the bench, I've got a Hammerland HQ100 shortwave receiver. It was actually given to me by a fellow named Elmer, K-A-0-H-R-F. He happens to live just down the road in Jackson, Michigan. And he delivered it to me with a whole trunk full of cool old radios. So we're going to have a lot of nice stuff here to feature on D-Lab. Alright, so the Hammerland is complete. It's got the original manual. The cabinet back is there. I already pulled it out because we're going to give it a look over. And I bet you this thing will operate. It looks to be in excellent condition and it's got the built-in calibrator. Let me give you a little tour. So here's the HQ100. She's in pretty decent shape. You can see that this one did not have the accessory clock. And that's good because I don't like those clocks. They're noisy, unreliable, and they've got AC switching in them that sometimes can fool you to think that your Hammerlin has a problem, right? So it's a good thing it's not there. Let's check out the controls. So you've got your power, receive, send, and then their Q multiplier is actually kind of the BFO that puts it in the mode for sideband CW reception. Got antenna peaking. This is your main tuning. And here's your band select. You can see it covers 0.54 and these bands overlap all the way up to 30 megahertz. Then they have this one called the 20BS. I'm really not sure what that is. I'll have to read about it in the manual. Sensitivity or RF gain. Manual and AVC mode. Looks like it has a little noise limiter. Audio gain. Your band spread. So there should be ham bands here that could be calibrated in with that built in calibrator. Here's your S meter, frequency adjust, and selectivity, which is all part of the Q multiplier function of the receiver. All right, let's take a look around back. And here's the chassis. She looks to be in beautiful condition, pretty clean. The dials are not discolored, which is a good thing. Original filter cap. There's your rectifier tube. So over here is the built-in accessory crystal calibrator, which is a nice thing to have in this receiver. I'm not sure if these were 100 kilohertz or one megahertz. We'll check that out later. Here is the toggle switch that turns on and off that calibrator. They did not have an accessory position on the front of the receiver for that module. Kind of a bummer. Speaker hooks here. This is for headphones, right? This is your S meter zero adjustment. And over here is where you connect up your antenna. You can see there's no SO239 connector, but there's plenty of room back here if you want to add that. All right, let's take a look underneath. Here she is bottom side. Looks pretty much stock from what I can see. But the first thing that caught my eye is it looks like we had a little forest fire in here at one time. So looking down here by the power transformer, it's very dark in that area. I'm hoping that we didn't have arcing and sparking coming out of the end of the transformer. But then I look up here and I see these two sprig caps. Originally, there were some caps like this, according to the manual. So my guess is, is maybe they just shorted out and started flaming up and all the smoke and heat went this direction because you can see some of the wiring is also charred and a little bit melted and probably what caused this guys is if you take a look at the schematic this radio never had a fuse so when that shorted out the 120 had to have somewhere to go and it just burned things up so the first thing we're gonna do is fire this thing up on a bariac make sure it powers and then I'm going to immediately install a fuse so that it's safe to operate. And then we'll go from there. I've got the HQ100 hooked to my Variac. I'm going to bring that up slowly and watch the current. I also hooked up a speaker because just as with a guitar amp, the audio output wants to see that load. 
So if you were to bring up a receiver without a speaker connected, it could possibly hurt the output transformer because it's not seeing the impedance that it wants to. Okay. So there we go, about 60 volts applied. Not seeing any dial lights yet. Not seeing much activity yet. But we are pulling current. And there's no flames shooting out of the transformer. So that's good, right? Of course, I got so much sunlight coming in here. It's hard for me to tell if the lights are. Oh, yeah, yep, they're on. That's a good sign. Very good, very good. All right, keep on going. So there's like 100 volts applied. It sounds like we got high voltage. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and install a fuse. I'm going to use this style, which will end up right here on the chassis. I'd rather do that than drill a big half inch hole on the rear panel. And this receiver is very accessible. You take out two screws and it'll pull right out of the cabinet. Okay. So if you blow a fuse, I really don't see much of an advantage to having the rear fuse holder. So we're going to go with the style on the chassis. And I'm also going to add a grounded power cord at this time. Get the two conductor off. If we're going to update it, let's update it all. All right, I'm getting ready to install the new three conductor cord and I'm using my new cord installation tool. I actually received three of these from you guys after you saw me struggling. Got one from Ron C, one from Joe V, and one from my anonymous fan that keeps sending me stuff in the mail. I really do appreciate guys, this does make a world of difference. I will continue to use it. All right, there's our new fuse holder installed, grounded power cord, but before I power it up, I'm gonna see what I can do about cleaning some of this carbon off here, eliminate any chances of high voltage getting on that and shorting out. All right, so the good news is, this is just smoke residue. This was not live electricity jumping around on the chassis. It's coming right off with a little bit of lacquer thinner. So I'm sure that the power transformer is fine. I'll continue the cleanup later, but the next thing I want to do is change out this filter capacitor. It's old, original, and will degrade the performance of the receiver. Rather than pulling that can type off the chassis, I'm going to go ahead and put these individuals underneath on a terminal board. That way, from the top view, she looks 100% original. There's a new terminal board that will support the new filter caps. This wire here going over to the calibrator is damaged. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that out of my way. We'll connect that later with a new wire. <laughs> And then these other terminals on the cap, I'm just going to get underneath with my wire cutters. I'm going to cut those right off the old filter cap. Okay. If you ever put in new filter caps, make sure that you totally disconnect from the old one because it's leaking. So if you put in fresh caps and you just tie them to these terminals, you still got the leakage path. You didn't accomplish anything. Okay, so we're going to get these out of the way. I'm going to swing these wires up to the terminal board with the new caps. Okay, this last one here is a 25 microfarad section. That actually goes all the way over to the audio output tubes cathode. I'm going to install that cap up there, not here. All right, before we go any further, let's bring the radio up on the Bariac, give those new caps an initial charge. I prefer doing it this way rather than shocking the poor things. And we'll just make sure that the radio is actually operating. It's always good to do this in stages. And there's about 100 volts applied. I'm hearing a little bit of a hum out of the speaker. Yep, she's still alive. Good sign. All right, so at this point, 
I'm going to move up into the audio section and we're going to add that cap that I told you that I was leaving out down here. But I'm also going to do a nifty little improvement to the audio section that will make this radio sound much nicer on AM. Now here's your audio output section. You got a little 6AQ5 tube here and this is your preamp. And in between it is this little funny rectangular guy with like four or five leads shooting out of the bottom. And what that is, if you look at your schematic, is what they call Z1. It was a combination of components, kind of like an early IC for capacitors and resistors, okay? And they use these routinely in radios. And they're kind of a generic part, okay? They just pop these in, the audio comes in, goes out, goes to your 68Q5. But the problem is, if you look real close, you'll see there's these little 250 puff caps in here. Those are actually snubbing frequencies to ground. And then this 0.01 doesn't allow much bass to go through so you kind of get that communication style pinched up audio. So what I do is I remove this, okay? And then I add my own resistor to feed the plate here. I up this to 0.02 microfarad and I put another little resistor from pin 1 to ground to satisfy the grid. And this thing will be a whole different receiver on AM, believe me. You'll get much nicer response, cost you about a buck to do this. So I'm going to get in here and carve this out. We're going to put a little terminal board, add the new components, and give this radio a test. So here is where I'm going to land the terminal board. I removed the cathode resistor from the 6AQ5. It was smoked, okay? This is common because they're underrated for the current going through the tube. So I'm going to bump this up to about a 475 watt resistor. This brown wire right here is the wire that was going up to the filter cap assembly. So we're not going to use that again. Everything is going to be here on the terminal board to take care of the audio section. Alright, there's the updated audio circuit. The old chiclet is gone. Got a 470 ohm resistor now for the cathode resistor along with this cap. The other miscellaneous components, the 0.02 microfarad cap is down there. You'll see this jumper wire, okay? So that's jumping these negatives to ground. There's a reason for that. And I'll show you that in a future video of how to add a cool muting circuit to the HQ100. All right, so here's a nice close-up of the new audio circuit. And I'm gonna post a before and after schematic so you can see how easy this is to perform. So you remove that Z1 little complicated mess and you simply install two new resistors and a 0.02 microfarad cap that couples the preamp to the audio output tube. You're going to update the cathode resistor from a 430 ohm to the 470 ohm. And the resistors and all other supporting circuitry stay the same. So it turned out the Hammerlin crystal calibrator did not work, so I tore it apart hoping to fix it, but that was not possible. So I have converted it to a D-Lab XCU1M calibrator. This is a 1 MHz calibrator using a 6AK6 tube, and it works great. But the other thing I don't like is having the switch on the rear panel, and I think I found a cool solution. So as I stated previously, this model did not have the clock. So there is this little tin cap right here. You pop that out, and that's where the clock adjustment used to be. But what I'm going to do is come into it with a push button from the rear, and that will be to turn on and off the calibrator, make it much more accessible than that toggle on the back panel. There's the rear of our new calibrate switch, and it just so happens that the send receive switch has the same B plus line that is feeding the calibrator through that rear toggle switch. So this is going to be an easy install. I simply run a jumper up to the switch, out of the switch, to the input of the calibrator. Off we go. All right, let's give the calibrator a test, and then we're going to flip the radio around and make use of that hole that we just created removing the toggle switch, right? 
So we are on the 4 to 10 megahertz band. There's my calibrator. There he is. Peek it with your intended tune. And shut it off and receive. And I found a nice black knob so it looks semi-original. Great improvement. Now, let's go to the back panel. So that is the hole that this toggle switch was installed in for the calibrator. And since it's right next to the antenna strip, what I'm going to do is install an SO239 connector. So if a ham radio operator gets a hold of this, he can just pop his coax on and he's on the air. We now have an SO239 connector on the rear panel for easy antenna connection. I think we're at the point we can hook this thing up and see how it performs. Not stick Here we go, live test of the HQ100. Got the new audio modification installed. Let's see how she sounds. Okay, good luck, buddy. Uh, T.O.P. Howard, WNA, T.O.P., what you got for us? Yeah, 9 in group, W-A-9-T-O-P. As the band rapidly turns toward 20 like it's been for uh, most of the winter. K-E-9-U. I think this is the first formal time I've talked to you under that call. Uh, uh, Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, um, yeah, well, I guess so, Harry. <laughs> anyway, Howard, I, I had a similar issue. And I think the value of uh, the Ranger both share the same. There's a, off that pot, there's a 500 picofarad cap. And that thing was getting flaky on me doing the exact same thing. And I was talking to uh, uh, Terry Dayton, and he said to check that, and that's what that thing was. So, yeah. WB9 Lima Zulu Alpha, a long time. MQ, also a long time. Where are you at? KZ9FYL. Uh, uh, K9KEU. All right. Ah, <laughs> uh, standby. I gotta fill something in there. Okay. So let me demonstrate how this calibrator works. So let's say you're on the 40 meter band and you want the band spread dial 7.0 to 7.3 to be accurate. So set your dial at 7, okay? And you're going to turn on the calibrator and you're going to find it. There it is. So there is the calibration signal which makes this dial accurate. This dial doesn't matter at this point, you're just going to use your band spread, okay? So now 40 meters is calibrated. Oh, well, I am very glad I don't have to uh, go into work, uh, work from home, so I don't have to deal that deal with, with ice on the roads like I did in the past. So, but we got we dodged a bullet on that one. But supposedly I just looked at the weather and there's some kind of another. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. I yeah, like that old song, Winchester, Winchester Cathedral. You know that. Uh, I remember that song back from years ago. It had that kind of 40 uh, meters restricted audio sound to it. So it still has that a little bit, but a lot better than drivers. I got one of them that has the original giant audio signal. driver in it, that little uh, diaphragm, uh, metallic. Uh, diaphragm where you can adjust the spacing between the uh, the diaphragm element or whatever to optimize the sound and uh, boy that doesn't sound very good compared to the little speakers I put in underneath the base of these things <laughs> Thank you. 
for a benevolent world. Caring news for a protected world. Supreme Master Television brings you good news from around our beautiful planet, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Our programs can be viewed online at suprememastertv.com as well as on YouTube and iOS or Android apps. You gotta love it. Skip's even running on CB and this thing is just booming in. I'm really impressed with the HQ100. I hope you are too. If you have one of these, make those audio mods. I think you'd be very happy with the result. See you again. Tell your boss about rule number three. Uh, if you think something's wrong, it probably ain't what you're thinking of and you'll probably find something else.